In my last video, we charged this cheap supercapacitor here. It claims 500 farad, but comes nowhere near that, even when it was new. These are uh, low-priced, and uh, they exaggerate their capacitance. But in any case, they're still fun to play with. So we charged it for the most part with this power supply. This has short circuit protection though, which is not good for charging supercapacitors. It can turn the output off, and I don't know if that's bad once this is uh, charged a bit, and that output is off if it's bad for the power supply. So we used a diode to get it to charge one direction only, and to prevent it from thinking it had a short circuit. So this isn't the focus of the video today, but we'll look at the voltage that it held overnight. So we got it up to 2.4 volts. And uh, now it's dropped down to 1.7. So that was about 12 hours ago that we did that. These self-discharge uh, pretty quickly too. So in any case, generally you charge them and use them relatively quickly. But in any case, it's cheap. For a serious project, you would actually buy a good capacitor. We are going to look at resistance now. So this jumper made my video a lot harder to make. But uh, hopefully it was still enjoyable. We're going to look at the resistance. This one seems to have more resistance than the other one that I grabbed to finish the video. And you can see we got 1.6 ohms, and that's actually low right now. If the wire is moved right, it's going to go up. You can see 3 for a bit there. And uh, there we go, we got about uh, two, 2 volts right there. So, looks like best case scenario. I might get like one and a half, two volts, depending on how the alligator clips are. And it can get a lot worse. I, I held on one position, you saw six for a little bit there, where it's like 14. So especially if there's movement, it's uh, really going bad. So that was a problem when we're doing a supercapacitor video. As you just saw, we already measured the supercapacitor right now is 1.7 volts. So if I'm applying 2.7 volts, that only leaves one volt of difference. Plus we had added this Schottky diode, which was dropping about uh, 2 volts from, from this. So we had less than a volt. And so I wanted to keep providing 1 amp of current. But you can't do that when this jumper alone has 2 ohms of resistance. And I thought maybe at half a ohm or something. And uh, I was way off. And at times, depending on its positioning, maybe it was like 10, 20 ohms or something like that. So in any case, that's an important thing to be aware of, how much resistance each connector has, especially when you're trying to get higher current at lower voltages. So that's really about it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting on the screen. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. If you can, please donate. I have links down below. That would help out a ton. But uh, watching videos helps a lot too. Thanks for watching them. I'll see you in the next video.